Good afternoon, and welcome to the talk program of the Forest Public Diplomacy Week. This session is titled ASEAN RK Exchange Through Art and Culture, and is co-hosted by ASEAN Culture House, located in Busan, and ASEAN Foundation, located in Jakarta, Indonesia. I am Yeji Shin, a program officer at the Korea Foundation, and I'll be co-moderating this session together with Ben Hemp, who is the project director at the ASEAN Foundation. He will be joining us virtually um, through the, the screen right behind us. Good afternoon, Ben. Can you hear us? Yes, I can, Yeji. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Wonderful. Thanks, Yeji. And a warm welcome to those of you who have joined us on site at Dongdaemun Design Plaza and those of you who are joining us online. I am certainly missing being in Seoul in person today, but I guess bringing people together in this hybrid digital format has forced us all to exercise our creativity over the last two years. And that leads us very neatly into part of what our session will explore this afternoon. And that is how the arts and culture connects us in tangible and dynamic ways to our world, advances diplomatic efforts, builds deep connections, mutual understanding and goodwill that builds the resilient communities underpinning our future prosperity. I'm very excited to hear what our expert speakers have to say today, and I trust that you are also. Now to set the stage, so to speak, it is my very great pleasure to introduce Dr. Yang Li Eng, the Executive Director of the ASEAN Foundation uh, and our keynote speaker. Uh, Dr. Yang has over 26 years experience in the public and private sectors with specializations in media, gaming, and the digital economy. She has led the ASEAN Foundation since 2020, a multinational not-for-profit organization with programs that cover four key areas, namely community building, education and scholarships, media and journalism, and of course, arts and culture. Please join me in welcoming to the screen, Dr. Yang Mi Eng. Thank you so much, uh, Ben, and a very good afternoon to all of you. Annyeonghaseyo, bangasumida. Hi, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm actually uh, very happy to be here and uh, very happy to work together with Korea Foundation. Uh, it's too bad, uh, Ben, that we couldn't be in <laughs> Dongdaemun, uh, our favorite place for shopping <laughs> and food. Uh. So never mind, we were, our heart is there. So uh, without further ado, uh, let me do some sharing with you about what is the pan, uh, partnerships uh, with, um, wait a minute, give me a second. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I hope you can see my uh, PPT. Okay. So uh, just a quick uh, introduction, ASEAN Foundation is actually, uh, wait a minute, it's the screen, wait. Okay. ASEAN Foundation uh, has been uh, in a uh, setup since uh, uh, 1997. Uh? So we have been doing a lot of uh, community building and then uh, a lot of development uh, for the people-to-people's uh, -people's connections. Uh? So, uh, let me just share with you. Okay, our mission is to, com uh, to commit to promoting ASEAN awareness. So in terms of ASEAN awareness, we promote ASEAN identity. So we have four sections here. You can see that our pillars are arts and culture, community building, education, and media. So arts and culture is very deep embedded in the ASEAN Foundation's uh, mission. So this is in line. That's why we are very happy and thank you to ROK, for uh, uh, trusting ASEAN Foundation to be your partner. So uh, for the last one year, we started the ASEAN Foundation and a Connect ASEAN program. It's already uh, more than a year. So until now, I think there are many programs that we already uh, uh, conducted. Uh, and unfortunately, there are not much of face-to-face, -face, but still we do our best. Uh, of course, with my uh, project director, which is Ben, has been trying his best to uh, run the programs with these limitations of movement. So uh, we also won uh, 
3G Capacity Building Awards last year and also 3G Championship Award in Social Responsibility with the Cambridge uh, uh, Award. So, uh, Gold Award for the Best PR Campaign in Public Service in 2018. And uh, these are some of the programs that we have. Uh, we do have more than 10 programs, but for next year, we have almost close to 16 programs uh, running together concurrently with a very small team. Uh, we move. We are very lean organization because we are uh, actually fully funded by our funders, public and private funds. Uh. So if you see that ASEAN Care on the top is actually for the uh, pandemic uh, relief uh, and helping all the people in ASEAN to cope with the pandemic. So we give like food relief. We also give like um, uh, uh, sanitizing materials, masks, and all that. And this is really supported by United Way worldwide and. Uh, and uh, Korean chess community. Yeah? So that is also uh, our partnerships with United Way worldwide. So if you see that we have Data Science Explorer, we have Social Enterprise Development Program, Bridges to the Future, Future Ready ASEAN, you know, all these programs that you see, some of the names here are very digital-like, is more on Future Ready skill. Because at this pandemic time, uh, we focus a lot on uh, IR 4.0 programs. That means uh, upgrading the skills for the young people in ASEAN. Our young people is aged from 15 to 30, 34. So this group of people needs to be given opportunities uh, to find works. No? They are actually the lost generation. So we are trying to reduce the lost generation impact here. So most of our programs are designed and custom made to suit these needs of the time. And uh, we have, do have very good partners like Google, you know, Huawei coming into the pictures. Uh, and we also have got a German, a German government, and of course, uh, not forgetting uh, uh, Korean government uh, for your support. So we have ASEAN Youth Social Journalism Contest. These are actually the arts and culture. Sometimes we use a media, uh, platform for the competition, but the themes is always changing, like environmental, climate change, you know. Uh, so all the uh, themes, we work around whatever is needed during that time. So every year we have a different types of uh, uh, theme. And if you see the ASEAN Foundation Model ASEAN Meeting, maybe I would like to also open up for um, Korea Foundation in future to consider our partnership with us, because this is the exchange of youth between two countries then we can have a leadership program. And this leadership program takes the model of the summit meeting, all the ministerial meetings. So they have a role play here, you know. So the youth really enjoy this kind of uh, uh, partnerships and uh, work together between the youth. Huh? So I would like to actually propose for the partnerships for this program. So we have empowering youth with is more on social development. We go to the ground, we identify community that we wanted to help, and this program actually fully funded by Maybank Foundation. It's a bank, it's a, a financial institution. And of course, we have, con, uh, we have uh, ASEAN Foundation internship program right now. We actually transform our internship totally to online since last year. Because the young people couldn't come to Jakarta to do their internship. We only have one headquarters, which is based in Jakarta. And now uh, I will zoom into the Connect ASEAN program. It is actually a Korean, uh, ASEAN Korean partnerships. It's a promoting cultural diplomacy. I will proudly want to say that this is one of the first initiatives focusing on arts and cultural partnerships. So I really thank uh, ROK you know, for your uh, contribution and support to uh, boost up and uh, to help us actually achieve the ASEAN identity uh, mission. So we have, uh, uh, these are actually based, uh, tied up to all the policies and strategies uh, in line with the uh, ASEAN missions uh, and visions by the leaders. So we have Presidential Committee on New Southern Policies, we have ASEAN ROK Plan Actions on 2021-2025. We also have packed together the strategy with ASEAN Social Cultural Community Blueprint 2025 and Strategic Plan for Culture and Arts. There is a special one drafted in 2016 to 2025 uh, with the senior officials. Uh. So. Uh, we work closely also with SOMKA, if you are aware, uh, this program. So uh, Connect ASEAN, uh, uh, so far, the one and a half years, uh, 
we have already uh, facilitating an uh, exchange among artists from ASEAN and Republic Korea. So you can see that we have total applicants of 3,000 over and we totally uh, benefited 1,000 over uh, beneficiaries and the impacts uh, for the exhibition side, we have uh, about three or four exhibitions with the, mu uh, with the museum and uh, it's already churned out 24 over 1,000, uh, close to 25,000 of visitors. So even during this pandemic time, people can still walk into the museum and uh, uh, appreciate uh, the arts, uh, the, the arts, uh, arts from Korea and arts from ASEAN. So our partners are Museum Machan, you know, uh, and then Binelli in uh, Jogja. We have uh, ASEAN Culture House, you know, and then we have ASEAN Europe uh, Foundations Partnership. So we have few parties that we are working with. And uh, these are some of the quick introduction on some of the programs that we have launched and organized last year. We have Connect ASEAN Virtual 360 Degree uh, Connect, which is a uh, this is a, one of the very uh, uh, good programs where we have a uh, partner, you know, we have paired ASEAN art, artists, ASEAN cultural arts players, and also Korean. So they have to be in the pair. So they have to look after each other and they have to understand each other's cultural you know, and arts and uh, the, the country's background. So this is a gathering of 20 emerging cultural leaders from both country, uh, both regions. And then uh, weekly art stories update via Instagram. And we also produce uh, each of the theme produced uh, 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 articles, you know, from their sharing and all that, from the experience. So you can see that uh, Jade, uh, uh, Jade Park, one of the participants from Korea has shared. And <clears throat> actually during this pandemic time, uh, most of the artists feel that they are alone, you know. They are badly affected, you know, their livelihood. Uh, I think except... Uh, I think Korea recently, uh, yesterday just announced uh, Koreans' soft power is really powerful, uh, creating so much of incomes and revenue for GDP contribution for this year. So thanks to the Squid Game, and I think, I think I'm not sure if you have watched it, but that is really a superpower. I have watched it and I finished it in a two days time because this is so engaging. Uh. So uh, no doubt it can actually hit the world markets and make its uh, roots uh, to the success. So we have ASEAN Day 2020 short video contest. Okay, this was done during last year when everybody was cracking our head and saying, okay, look, we are now locked down. We can't travel. We can't cross into any other country. What shall we do? So we quickly launched, within two weeks, I think, we quickly launched a competition. And surprisingly, we have uh, received uh, more than almost close to 100 uh, within the two weeks short films. So we have winner from Philippines and also from Indonesia. So these are really a good examples of people still have, still can use the medium of uh, arts and culture to express their, uh, their ideas and their message across the region and also now to uh, uh, Korea. So we have one more is a Creative Future Dialogues. So it's a series of dialogues during the post pandemic uh, we target at post pandemic pathways for the arts and cultural sector. So here, all the artists and uh, in creative industry players come together and share, you know, share the way and draft some uh, roadmaps for betterment of the industry. Of course, the three themes is digital acceleration, social impact, environmental sustainability. So these are the topics that cannot run away for this moment. Eh? We will forever want, we will have to actually converge eh? before that. The digital always digital is always there for creative industry, but it has never really been uh, taken too seriously, yeah? except if you are in the uh, digital uh, new media line. So they use a lot of technology, but for the storytelling and traditional arts and cultural platform, uh, digital is for them is quite new. So here we are talking about converting the virtual arts and, 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 and paintings and beautiful uh, creations into digital format, you know. Uh, that is really uh, uh, mind-boggling and then it's really creating good impact from the attendance to the museum. Huh? They use all this technology to showcase their work. So the artists actually don't have to travel to their location. They can still tell the story effectively. And we have Connect ASEAN Stories Across Rising Land. This is really a successful program. 
churn up more than 18,000 of uh, uh, participants visiting Machang Museum in Jakarta. So we have full support from all our uh, ambassadors, our board of trustees, and also some of the ambassadors to ASEAN, especially from, uh, uh, from a Europe, European uh, countries, uh, come and actually visit uh, this uh, showcase. Uh. And uh, we, in terms of Connect ASEAN August gathering, uh, this is another one uh, that we just produced uh, ASEAN Gallery 20th Anniversary Commemorative Publication. So it is a very nice book. If you're really interested to know about ASEAN and its origins and the arts and culture from each country, you should actually pick up these books. Huh? I think these books, uh, this publication can also be accessed through our website. There is a soft copy for everyone. It's free, yeah? free publication. So if you are in Jakarta, you of course can drop by to the center. There is a center, it's a physical center here of all the collections is placed there. Uh, so uh, we have, uh, this is the recent uh, programs, uh, just about last uh, two weeks, I think, uh, it has been uh, running now. So it will be completed by mid of uh, November. It's a uh, Biennale Jogja. I know we have a Korean Pavilion 2020. Uh, it's, uh, the theme is Hacking Domesticity. So this is talking about arts and cultural expression again and uh, it is a very good display and uh, it's still open if you want to visit until 22nd I think eh? yeah so uh, if any of you are interested eh, to appreciate the uh, history and um, arts creations and storytelling please come and join this uh, Jogja and we have also got virtual version of it you know, you can also access to the virtual version version of this uh, show and uh, in terms of shifting uh, uh, Shifting Orientation Singapore Art Week, this has been uh, taking place in Singapore, but uh, there is also a combination of collaboration. Uh, Afro, the theme is in our best interest, Afro Southeast ASEAN infinites, uh, infinities during a Cold War NTU ADM gallery. So this program actually has... Um, so uh, wait a minute. Yeah, sorry. So this is a partnership with ASEAN U uh, Asia Europe Fund uh, Foundation. Wait, just a moment. No? Yep. So um, okay, never mind. I think the, there are some artworks that we want to show. So uh, this spin off from the just now that program, this first program in Singapore, there is a spin off to this uh, Vargas Museum, Manila. So the theme is actually cast but one shadow, Afro Southeast Asia. There's also another uh, good showcase for you to actually uh, check it out if you are in uh, Manila. So uh, in terms of ASEAN Culture House Busan, we have it in uh, from November 2021 to February 2022. So this is based on rise to the surface. Huh? This is another great uh, preparation. I think all the um, all the work that uh, been uh, we have been work we work together with the ministerial level of each of the country AMS, and uh, the artist uh, output uh, and artwork has been selected and nominated by the uh, government from each of the ten country. So they actually nominated their artists to represent the country. So all the work has been shifted and, and uh, arrive in uh, Busan and will be uh, showcasing very soon. So you will see original work. Huh? It's not the replicas and all that, no, because we still do the shifting and movements of arts across using physical huh, methods. So uh, to end my presentation and sharing, uh, I just want to thank uh, Ambassador to ASEAN, uh, uh, Ambassador Lim, for your greater support. And then also I'm looking forward to uh, create more impact and to actually do more programs with uh, ROK or artists from Korea or industry players from Korea. So I also would like to pledge for everyone here, together uh, let's try to find a way to uh, come up with a very good roadmaps and strategy that uh, we can help to build back the uh, creative industry from ASEAN. ASEAN region. So that is what I would like to end my uh, presentation here and I pass it back to Ben. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Yang Mi Yang, for your presentation. Our next speaker is Q Choi, who is a Performing Arts Festival director. He began his career at the Chuncheon International Mime Festival and then at the Ansan Street Arts Festival. Most recently, he served as a creative director of the UK Korea season 2017 and 18, organized by the British Council. And in 2005, Q founded Asia Now Production to develop, produce, and present innovative contemporary theater, dance, and interdisciplinary arts of Asia. Today, he will be sharing his experience with a particular focus on ASEAN. Please join me in welcoming Q Choi to the stage. Thank you very much, Yeji. <laughs> 안녕하세요. Hello. Very quiet. I just want to communicate to you, you audience here. So, very uh, nice meeting you to coming over here. Uh, my name is Q uh, Choi. Now I'm working as a creative director uh, at Seoul Performing Arts Market as well as uh, Asia Now uh, Production Company. Um, thank you very much for having me as a, one of the speakers as part of ASEAN Korea Exchange Art and Culture, uh, hosted by Korea Foundation Asian Culture House in Busan and Asian Foundation in Jakarta. Um, uh, I am an independent producer, so what I'm going to sharing with you is not policy. I, as a practitioner, I have a more questioning and the findings I would like to share, uh, rather than about what we did, what was good, uh, uh, like that. That's so, uh, so after this session, uh, we try to, to think about, or rethink about, reshaping about how we have a more deeply connect with uh, between Asian, uh, ASEAN and uh, Korea. Uh, for the uh, visually impaired person, I audio describe myself, uh, and also where we are. We are at a DDP conference hall. I am 176 tall, wearing a black uh, jacket, a man in black. Uh, I am also uh, a little bit curly hair, uh, medium built. Uh, so let's go to the, my slide. My slide, okay, slide does not move. Okay, just one second. Oh, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, my slide uh, basically is divided into two parts. Uh, first part is uh, um, I am working as uh, one of initiator, uh, organizer, Asian producers platform, uh, which is, uh, uh, as you see, the independent producers network uh, in uh, Asia. Uh, so, uh, through the Asian uh, producer platform, we organize uh, Asian producer platform camp. So especially I will focus on uh, Jakarta, Joke Jakarta, uh, the connection with uh, uh, Southeast Asia, so uh, that part. So where we can sort of sharing what we learned, what we found. Second part is a sort of more questioning for the preparation of uh, post-pandemic. So if uh, pandemic COVID-19 gave uh, lots of questions. So what will be the future um, collaboration uh, 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 at the post-pandemic So slide? So briefly introduce about uh, Asian Produce Platform. Uh, is a, a partnership with the independent sector and then private, uh, the public sector. So uh, Australia, Japan, Korea, Taiwan started but uh, we are 100 independent producer in uh, course of all uh, uh, Asia. The partners supported uh, Art Australia Council, Art Council Korea and the Japan Foundation and Taiwan National Cultural Art Foundation. But we do have an annual meeting also uh, producers camp. So that's the structure starting 2013. And in 2021, we couldn't meet physically, we met uh, virtually. So we have a virtual residence you know, through the online. Main uh, core program in uh, APP, APP camp, basically uh, connecting to people, uh, understanding local contexts and uh, creative industry in each country. And an uh, uh, important part is uh, topic group research based on local context, what we have to 
research in a deeper way. And rather than somebody give a lecture, we are peer, uh, more focused on peer-to-peer -peer, uh, mentorship. Uh, that's what we focus on. Um, Uh, uh, next slide is uh, uh, what actually uh, we focus on. So three keyword uh, Asia Produce platform. Number one is producers. Uh, you know, the, because normally we talking about artist creativity, so we are less talking about producers creativity. So we are challenging about the role of producer. So what would be uh, producers creativity? And then, especially uh, within Asian context, the producer's role should be different. What would be the new role? That's a sort of our main uh, question. And then, as you know, is uh, Asia, uh, uh, also ASEAN, really dominated by the governmental, national-oriented uh, kind of partnership. So how we independent sector making interdependent between, I mean, the private independent sector and the governmental sec uh, sector. That's a sort of main uh, focus. Se uh, second thing is we, it's hard to define what is Asian identity, uh, but uh, we are less talking about Asian identity, more talking about Asian transnational approach. Uh, but when we started 2013, what is a contemporary art in Asia? That was our question. And also, uh, rather than uh, Indonesian context or Korea context or th Thailand context, what will be transnational approach in uh, ASEAN uh, countries? That was our main focus. The last one is how we really encourage cross-cultural uh, collaboration between um, Asian countries. That was an um, important question. Also, non-governmental uh, Asian network, that was our main focus. Um, uh, last for almost eight years, uh, these are what we found. Um, is uh, f uh, more about uh, how independent sector established national institution uh, could work together. That was the first question we had. And the uh, next generation, because uh, Asia is really strong hierarchical culture, so how we sort of provide a new space for the next generation, that was the second question. Um, and then also the collaboration uh, based on nation. So how we uh, move on, move away from nation base, more city, local culture base. That was a sort of our questions. Uh, and also uh, number four is a non-governmental Asian platform. Uh, try to get an independence of our uh, artistic direction. Uh, and also, uh, number six, five was very important is Korean Hallyu really dominates Southeast Asia. This commercial way is only good. Yes, public diplomacy way is a good um, way, soft power, but there is no, uh, I mean, K-pop only in Korean culture. So how we uh, sort of uh, out of a box of a mainstream, also, the Chinese political power in Southeast Asia, we found very strong. We make a joke about within 10 years, uh, before was there was a big gap between European culture and Asian culture, but we, we say that Chinese speaking, non-Chinese speaking, uh, political power or cultural imbalance will be a big issue we talked about. And also, Japan founder, foundation or Japanese cultural power is very strong in, um, in Asia. So how we sort of, uh, out of those three countries, we uh, get a balance, that was a, a, a big uh, topic. But last one is important is, what will be transnational uh, approach? Yes, each country has a different context, but still there is a uh, gender issues, also disability, diversity, inclusion, uh, city uh, issue. So how we connect a transnational way, that was a sort of big questions we found it. Uh, so 2018, we had um, uh, the Jogjakarta and the Jakarta uh, had a, a six day, a seven days uh, camp in association with the independent uh, produ producers in Indonesia and also uh, Salihara Theater, and uh, several arts organization in uh, Yogyakarta. So uh, we had a, a lot of visiting program to local studios, 
and also meeting local artists, research uh, also um, based on five topics, uh, open forums, and enjoying local culture, especially food. Um, so this is a sort of uh, finding which goes to the, my question uh, for, for the developing uh, Asian ASEAN and Korea uh, performing art connection. Uh, uh, compared to uh, Korea, uh, the Indonesian, our colleagues, is much more focused on uh, community art, socially engaged artwork. So we had a meeting with uh, Theater Garage and also uh, uh, Kunchi Cultural Studios. They are all much more focused on socially engaged art. Uh, also, second big finding is artists in initiated uh, uh, community. Rather than Korea, is everything is a uh, government. So how how different uh, between ASEAN countries and uh, Korea? And also, uh, third uh, topic we found is still we are also a similar question we have the uh, the. Uh, unbroken link between uh, traditional and contemporary. That's the same question they have. Because uh, Indonesian uh, uh, traditional art is a strong and very rich. So how we uh, transform into the contemporary art, that was a uh, big question. Uh, also, last one is uh, we found a very Im uh, interesting, important one is uh, independent, non-funded uh, festivals. But uh, in Korea is uh, fully uh, supported by uh, government. So how they work? Uh, so especially the Paper Moon Puppet Company based uh, Pasta Boneca Festival, and also interesting uh, other bad dog art festivals. How they actually manage uh, uh, run the festival without I mean supporting? That was uh, findings. So uh, the conclusion we found through the uh, Indonesian camp is three uh, sectors we have to think about. What is a contemporary art connection? Because the meaning of contemporary in ASEAN, uh, ASEAN countries and uh, Korea are uh, slightly different. More independently, more uh, sort of community-based, but here in Korea is uh, digital-driven and also industry-driven. So, uh, so there is a sort of gap, uh, differences, and a similarity. So, how we, when we say the contemporary art connection, how actually we connect with the different uh, concept, different meanings. Second thing is a lot of uh, project is sort of uh, annual uh, supporting. So how we actually long-term perspective, long-term development with, within Asian uh, ASEAN countries and, and, uh, and uh, Korea. And the last one is a really important question is, what, what is a fair co uh, collaboration? Because uh, out of ODA countries supporting and uh, contributing, uh, we do have all different uh, resources, which can be human resources, which can be knowledge, uh, it's not only money. So how can, what would be fair means uh, between the connection uh, in ASEAN countries and, and Korea? So I just leave uh, this question to you and to the speakers. Um, what would be fair collaboration and also transnational connection between ASEAN and Korea? So I don't have a, uh, I don't want to give an answer, but I hope you can think about in the future. Uh, this is sort of before pandemic started, my last I mean, three slides talking about in a post-pandemic time. I had a big research last year, uh, interview uh, with international uh, artists, producers, festival director, venue director, policy maker. So, uh, uh, so when you see the, this, um, uh, you know, the, the link, you can see the, uh, all the interview, 12 different uh, interviews. So when, when we have an interview, these are sort of findings about uh, now, are we going to stop? Are we going to pause and then change the direction? So things we have to stop no longer uh, uh, does not work, even though we go back to the normal. So we had a... Um, big question uh, about what, how we sifting, finding new ways. And then everybody knows about digitalization and also online platform for the performing arts. Uh, climate change, how we responding to climate changes, what, how we can make uh, green uh, uh, deep mobility ways. And then uh, 
you know, the physical uh, movement is uh, really limited. So how, uh, on the other hand, artists really focus on about your neighborhood. So a locality, hyper-locality decentralization was a hot issue. So based on that, we found that these three questions for the future um, international mobility and collaboration and circulation. Uh, number one is about new ways of connection. Number two is about climate change, how to artistically respond about greenway mobility. Because carbon footprint we may when we fly on, sending over all uh, you know, the art craft. Uh, so what would be greener way we sort of move around? The last one is we are living in a technology driven society. We can't, I don't mean in we uh, technology will uh, be replaced uh, by the uh, performing I mean, live art, but uh, we have to really think about how digital technology creates digital mobility. Based on that, we have three questions. So a lot of questions. So number one is, what is international touring mobility and circulation at the post-pandemic time? Second uh, question is, uh, in response to the climate crisis, what uh, are creative practice of artists and what is international mobility that is a more, much more greener. Um, the last one is how does evolving technology are uh, embedded in our daily life ch um, change creation, production, audience and consumption of the art because as you know is now is a metaverse, uh, VR, XR, one of the uh, new trends in, in the art. So what is digital uh, mobility? Uh, that's a sort of question. Uh, I know uh, uh, it is clear we we going to government just announced about with corona policy. We will a certain way go back to the uh, uh, so-called normal, but uh, we, I think this is a big sort of important question is uh, one of my colleague Anthony said that among the loss and the damage there have been the invaluable learning of new kind of thinking, uh, new ways of doing things. For the most, more important thing is uh, rather than reassembling the broken pieces from the past, we have to actually uh, create new foundation. That's sort of uh, what I want to uh, share, what I want to talk with you. So, for the pa uh, preparation of pandemic uh, uh, international mobility and a connection, these are questions I would like to share with you, is what will be the next mobility in ASEAN in, at a post-pandemic era? Uh, you know, the, when the uh, democracy movement in uh, Myanmar in Asian country, the most responsive country was Korea. Have you ever thought about why is that? Because there are so many uh, Myanmar uh, workers here, we already have a, a connecting with those people. There are many ASEAN people living in Korea. When we think about uh, always international exchange, we talking about outbound. What about in a, uh, ASEAN in Korea? So rather than going uh, uh, outgoing, outbound, we have the time to think about uh, inner ASEAN in Korea, what will be the role of art for the connecting ASEAN people in, uh, within Korea. That's sort of my uh, questions I would like to share with you. Uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope these are good questions you can think about. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Choi. Um, and uh, thank you so much for sharing your perspective from the independent uh, practitioner's perspective. Uh, that's uh, really important for us to consider, especially in the public diplomacy context. Um, so let's move on to our next speaker. Uh, so uh, Mr. Tom Tambio uh, from Indonesia is a businessman and collector. Uh, he has served on the board of the Dr. Biennale and he founded the Indo Art Now Foundation, an online platform archiving works by contemporary Indonesian artists. In 2016, his collection of Southeast Asian arts was exhibited in the Song Yun Art Space, a non-profit art foundation in Seoul. 
Uh, previously, Tom was the president of the Board of Young Collectors for Art Stage Jakarta and later the Fair's artistic director. He is currently the Fair Director of Art Jakarta, an annual international art fair with a focus on Southeast Asian and the Asian art market. Uh, please join me in welcoming to the screen, Tom Tandio. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, in, uh, introducing me. Uh, let me try to share my screen. All right. So um, uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Q Choi, also for all the questions you have for your presentation. It's very, very interesting. Um, uh, on my side, uh, I would just like to share more about the visual arts uh, as a culture diplomacy. Uh, first of all, uh, today, uh, there's so many events that's going on uh, in cultural exchange. Uh, but I decided that for this presentation, I'll do uh, I'll pick the, uh, the activities or the events uh, that I personally is involved uh, or personally is uh, included. So uh, first of all, I'd like to share about Art Jakarta. I'm now the Fair Director of Art Jakarta. Uh, Art Jakarta has been running for 10 years. And in 2019, uh, we revamped Art Jakarta uh, with new branding, new positioning, a new location, and we were very successful. And uh, we have 70 participants from galleries. Uh, 40 of them are non-Indonesian, and six of them actually are Korean. So they are Arario, Atelier Aki, Baik, Sun Contemporary, Ye, and Column Gallery. Uh, I would like to share some of the, the pictures that we have. Uh, at Jakarta, this is our new look, uh, very different from what it used to be. In Southeast Asia, other than Singapore, most of the affairs are usually uh, held in a ballroom uh, setting. So this um, uh, at Jakarta has uh, left a very strong impression to a lot of the uh, visitors. And uh, I'd like to show you that uh, such as this, this is a, a, a Jakarta spot, a, an artwork installation by Ronald Ventura from Philippines. This is a very famous Indonesian artist called Eko Nugroho, uh, an installation also in at Jakarta. Um, at Jakarta also have this spot, which, uh, which uh, we represented one of the uh, Korean artists, uh, Yoo Jin Yin. Uh, sorry if I cannot pronounce it right. Uh, represented by Column Gallery. And uh, her works uh, is actually about um, uh, the, the, the political issues between uh, North Korea and South Korea. And for us, like Asian, or we, especially ASEAN, we, 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 it would be very interesting for us to learn more historical issues uh, of Korea. And uh, she actually came down and she had a lot of interaction with a lot of the galleries, Indonesian galleries, collectors, and uh, it's, uh, it's good for both sides. Uh, in 2020, uh, at Jakarta, we decided to continue uh, with the fair, with the same setting. Uh, and, that, and at the beginning when we were doing our, our uh, 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 application, we actually uh, have all the six Korean galleries coming back including a new gallery such as Cook J, Gallery Wong, uh, to join us. But sadly, in March, uh, COVID hits Indonesia, and in May, uh, Art Jakarta had to cancel. But uh, we, in October, we changed our strategy and we changed it to Art Jakarta Virtual, an online uh, Art Jakarta uh, space. And actually, in Asia, I think this is one of the first art fair uh, that actually does a virtual fair. Uh, so it's very different from the uh, online virtual room. Uh, so uh, our fair looks exactly like a fair, and you go into the fair like game uh, to understand, uh, to, 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 to see art uh, in the virtual space. Now, uh, today I want to share with you also in our fair uh, settings that uh, a lot of people always see fairs as only uh, a buy and sell place. But actually, a, a fair actually has a lot of cultural exchange inside, and uh, for the Galleries, especially Korea, who have visited uh, Indonesia, uh, eventually they also pick up Indonesian artists uh, to be represented by the, uh, by the galleries. And even those that are not participating, they also come to Ajakarta, and we, Ajakarta, also introduce them to uh, artists so that they can represent uh, in Korea. At Jakarta, other than that, we also do other programs, such as collector exchange programs. So every year, uh, we will, uh, so one of the fair that we will collaborate with is Kiaf in Seoul. So we will bring 15 to 20 Indonesian collectors to go to Seoul and, uh, and we will uh, join their VIP tours and the exchange to visit uh, a lot of the collectors home in Korea, uh, to visit all the museums. And so uh, it's also one of the exchange uh, between the countries. Now, uh, I would like to share also on my personal side, uh, on, uh, I started collecting in 2007, and 
On 2016, I was invited by Songwon Art uh, and Culture Foundation, uh, their new name, uh, that, uh, and they have a new building now uh, in Seoul. Uh, they're very respectable and they invite me for a show of my collection. Uh, we have nine artists that was exhibited there and each of them have about three to four works. So there are about 40 works uh, exhibited there. Uh, it's a very great uh, uh, initiative, uh, a, a very great project that I was involved with. Uh, I'm very uh, honored to be there and I learned a lot uh, through this exchange uh, from Songwon of how we can do a better exhibitions, not only for artists, but also for collectors and also for curators. Someone has great uh, programs uh, that uh, always represent good art scene in Seoul. So these are some of the pictures that I have for my collection. Um, and then someone also at the same time uh, did another two shows. Uh, another show is uh, it's, uh, called the Mass 56. It's a collective photography collective. And they uh, were shown in Songwon. They are a very important uh, photographic collective in Indonesia. Uh, and uh, Songwon uh, purposely picked uh, a collector as a show, a collective in the show. And the last one is actually artist. She's a very famous female artist, which is now represented by White Cube. Uh, her works mostly are depicts about her life. And she also had a solo show in Songwon. Um, I would like to share, uh, these are some pictures. Uh, before I end, I just want to share that uh, in a cultural exchange, especially in an event, a lot of people see value just face value. Um, the event does happen only one time, but there's always repeating effects or ripple effects that happens uh, that benefited the whole scene more than just that event. So I really hope that more exchange will happen between countries ASEAN and Korea and uh, looking forward for more events. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Tom. Our final speaker is Youngwoo Kim, who is a film programmer at the DMZ International Film Festival. He has been um, curating special programs and showcases focusing on Asian and ASEAN cinemas to the Korean audience, while showcasing Korean uh, movies and cinemas to the abroad as well. Please join me in welcoming Youngwoo Kim to the stage. Hello. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, well, I mean, I'm talking about cinema, over Asian cinema and then uh, Korean cinema ex exchange and program. Uh, my name is Youngwoo Kim, and I'm working for uh, several film festivals as a programmer, mainly uh, working on uh, Asian cinema. Uh, today, actually, I'll talk about the Korean and ASEAN cinema, and then uh, how they affect each other and work together, and then interact uh, the, through the programs with a couple of keywords. Uh, the accessibility and availability and the networking uh, collaborations. Okay. Uh, I think we can start with uh, the medium and the Wang Zhong. Uh, anyone watch this movie? The, the medium, the Wang Zhong? Anyone watched? No. None. Okay. Actually, uh, this is, uh, uh, you can call it the medium and the Lang Zhong. It's kind of a very scary and horror film. It's a co-production uh, movie uh, between uh, Korea and Thailand. And then it released in Korea last July. And actually, this project got many attention from the, the festival and the industry people, even uh, at the developing stage, because this is a collaboration between two established and then uh, very commercially very successful uh, filmmakers from uh, Korea and Thailand, Na Hong Jin and Ban Chong. And then also it's interesting uh, the case, uh, this is a collaboration uh, of two companies, two major companies, Megabox of Korea and uh, the GDH of Thailand. Uh, actually two major companies, you know, uh, actually uh, the, representing uh, Korean cinema and Thailand cinema. Uh, actually, um, the major companies of Korea, like CJ and Lotte, have uh, branched out into the film industry of ASEAN countries and then uh, work with uh, local filmmakers. But actually, this case of Rang Jong uh, was a bit different kind of a collaboration. This is kind of a different types of co-production. It was very interesting. Okay. Actually, this is the poster from uh, the two filmmakers, the Gok Sung, the Wailing, and then the uh, Pimak, uh, the, over the Panjong. 
Actually, this is another case. Uh, actually, this is bad genius. Anyone watch this film? Bad genius, right? Okay, uh, actually, this movie was really, really successful in most of Asian countries except Korea. Uh, actually, which is uh, clearly showing uh, how Korean box office is very selective to Asian cinema. And then uh, the Korean box office is, uh, yeah, we all say that actually Korean box office is a lack of diversity. So hardly see uh, Asian films, Asian titles at theaters and then uh, neither at uh, other online platforms now. So it goes to uh, accessibility or availability. Actually, while Korean films and the contents are relatively easy to access in the Asian region via different uh, platform, but actually the contents of ASEAN uh, the region are still not seen to Korean audience here. But still, uh, the major film festival in Korea, like the you know, organizations and then the cultural centers like ASEAN Cultural House, have been working hard to introduce ASEAN movies and then the content to the Korean audience. Actually, most of international film festivals like you know the Busan and Jeonju and then the Bucheon International Film Festival, they've been introducing and then the discovering and focusing on an ASEAN cinema as one of their key programs. Not just uh, the major film festivals, but also a good number of showcases of ASEAN cinema have been organized by cultural centers. And ASEAN Cinema Week uh, has been uh, actually it's done twice so far. It's one of the very successful events with uh, more like an ASEAN commercial films. It's all done this year and then uh, two years ago. Next keyword is uh, networking collaborations. This is about supporting programs for the ASEAN young filmmakers in Korea. If we have a good idea or good concept or good project, there are opportunities you can get help or support. Major film festivals like Busan and Bucheon, they are running a funding programs to support ASEAN young filmmakers. Like Busan, Asian project market is one of the biggest project market uh, for Asian and Korean project at uh, the developing stage. Uh, actually, this is uh, the, the, the winner of APM, Asian project market this year. Uh, like uh, you can see, uh, the Camila Andini, uh, she's, uh, uh, the, she's representing uh, the Indonesian independent film scene, uh, and then another project from uh, Vietnam got award. Also, uh, actually this year, Bucheon Fantastic Film Festival, they are focusing on the more Chang uh, films. So actually, they work closely with the ASEAN filmmakers and then the ASEAN uh, production companies because the genre films are very strong in the region. So we can see a good number of projects. Actually, this is not completed yet. These are at the developing stage. They are all the projects from the ASEAN region. Um, actually, here at, uh, in Bucheon and uh, during the festival, uh, these the filmmakers and the producers of the project can meet uh, partners and the producers and then uh, finance opportunities and then a chance to win a prize. See our like, uh, new project and post poster of a project from uh, the, uh, the ASEAN countries. This is another case. Actually, white building uh, is a uh, is very fresh title uh, this year from uh, Cambodia. Uh, it's Kabik Nung. Uh, actually, what building is one of the cases. Actually, this project was developed and then uh, attended a Busan Asian Project Market uh, and got Best Award, Busan Award in uh, 2016. And then it went on the uh, production and uh, completed this year. And then uh, it's premiered at uh, Venice International Film Festival this year. And then I'm uh, still going around and then uh, uh, it's pretty much still uh, showing at uh, many, many uh, major festivals now. Not just for uh, the fund of industry program, but also uh, good quality of workshops and the education programs to learn and then create a network among young filmmakers from Korea, ASEAN, and uh, Asian uh, countries. Actually, this is a photo from uh, NAP. Uh, this is a network 
of a uh, or something. Actually, this is uh, is uh, presented by a uh, Bucheon Fantastic International Film Festival. This is kind of film school, uh, film school of a Bucheon Internet, uh, the film uh, festival. And we also have a photo of F L Y. We call it Fly. Uh, ASEAN and uh, Korean film leaders incubating program in Busan. This program went around ASEAN countries like uh, in Jakarta, and then uh, Singapore, and then uh, many countries, uh, Brunei as well, like uh, two years ago. But actually, this is stopped uh, now uh, due to the pandemic. Yeah, these are like the uh, posters from uh, the, all the events. Yes, actually to uh, conclude, uh, there are many things happening between Korean and ASEAN region when it comes to cinema and the film industry. And then we will be still doing uh, many things to be uh, the beneficial to uh, both sides. However, cinema and uh, the content are mostly easy to access and uh, work together. And uh, this has been proved uh, recent years in the both, both regions. So I really uh, personally want to uh, emphasize a couple of things here. As uh, the film industry and the content power of ASEAN countries have been uh, rapidly uh, growing, there are many things to do together in the near future. And then uh, we need to put more our efforts to create network uh, among key players and then a bridge between uh, young content creators from uh, both regions and then to grow together. Thank you. Thank you, Young Eun, for your presentation. And thank you, everyone, for your presentation. It was indeed meaningful to see how ASEAN and ROK have been communicating and exchanging their own unique values in different sectors of the arts and culture. We plan to have a little time for the Q&A session and a discussion, but for, due to the time limit, now I have to announce the closing of the session. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And then we hope to see you again at our continued projects. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Dr. Yang Lien. Thank you, Tom. Let me just say thank you on behalf of the ASEAN Foundation. And of course, uh, thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.